So you want to discover new solutions to the world's problems, cure diseases and create the sci-fi future you have dreamed of. You want to become a scientist, but you don't want to waste time and money getting bored to death at school. You have come to the right place, because in this video I will teach you how to become a scientist without going to school. I have to preface this video that I took the regular path of getting a bachelor's, then a master's and finally a PhD in material physics, and I am not self-taught by any means, but my academic experience has made me able to tell you what you can just as well do on your own. Ok, so let's get started. The first thing you'll have to do is to pick your field. Is it physics, chemistry, math or something else? This is a hard one that requires a lot of time to think about. To make it simpler, I would rephrase the question for you to what type of problem do you want to solve with your research? Do you want to cure diseases? Then biology is the right answer. Do you want to make new drugs? Then chemistry is the right answer. Do you want to travel to the stars, make indestructible materials and figure out new ways of generating energy? Then physics is your answer. It is crucial that you find what you are really passionate about, because this is the only thing that will keep you motivated. If you have a hard time finding your passion, lock yourself in a room, remove all distractions and fun things like phones, video games and books, and only have a blank sheet of paper in front of you, and don't let yourself do anything else before you write down your purpose. The boredom of sitting in that room will make your brain go haywire and start to think about what you rather would like to do than to sit in that boring ass room. Eventually, after a couple of hours, days or even weeks, your passion will manifest. Ok, so let's say your brain told you that you want to make the world's strongest material because this will enable space travel and make you bulletproof like Batman. Great, but where do you start then? First, you google the world's strongest material and then you'll find that elements consisting of carbon are insanely strong. You read the Wikipedia and watch the popular science videos about it that you can find. After you learned all the popular science stuff there is, you're ready for the next step. And this is the most controversial one. Instead of studying at the university for 9 years to eventually get a PhD, you go straight to reading the scientific papers about the topic of your passion. But why is this approach better? Firstly, if you read experimental papers, you get a better understanding of how the scientific laws are derived. And I will tell you, it's way more hand wavy than what the textbooks and teachers will lead you to believe. Second, the higher engagement you get from studying your passion will make the learning process way more efficient and fun. This is because you can relate everything you learn with what you want to achieve. Third, you do not need to learn all the useless fluff that is outside of your field of interest. Thus it is a way more efficient use of your time, which will give you an edge over people that are forced to learn stuff they do not care about. So instead of starting from the bottom up and slowly learning everything until you reach what's interesting, you start with your topic of interest and when it forces you to learn something fundamental, you go back to the bottom to learn it. In the beginning, reading a scientific paper in a field you have no experience with will be slow. It's like reading a different language. Don't feel bad about this, it's like this for everyone, even if you have a master's degree. When you see a word that you do not understand, you have to look it up on Wikipedia to get a concept of what it is. When you're completely new to a field, you might only understand 5% of your first paper. But as you read more, you will understand more. It is my advice that you first go to Google Scholar and search for review papers, which gives you an overview of the state of the field you're interested in. Then, after this, you can read the papers you find interesting that the review paper cites in order to go deeper down the rabbit hole. After some time, you will have a shallow but wide understanding of the topic, and now it's time for you to advance it further with your own experiments. You will have to ask yourself what has not yet been tested, and what experiment could work for whatever goal I'm trying to reach. Hopefully, you have chosen a field of passion where expensive equipment like synchrotron supercomputers or high-powered telescopes isn't a bottleneck for progressing it further. So let's say you now want to synthesize long carbon nanotubes. You look into how they are typically made. You can look on YouTube if anyone has ever done it in a garage lab before. If you then deem it plausible for you to try, the next step is to acquire equipment. Here, eBay, AliExpress and your local dumpster is your friend. Don't buy anything new unless it's absolutely necessary and look for cheaper alternatives than lab-grade equipment. 
in your local hardware store. The reason lab equipment is so damn expensive is that so few people buy it, so it's never mass produced and thus economies of scale can't kick in to make it cheap. But if you find the equivalent gizmo in a hardware store, where it has been mass produced for some other purpose, you can come a long way. Also, try to use junk as much as possible. I'm serious, I've built multiple vacuum systems primarily from stuff that I found in a dumpster. Anyhow, you slowly set up your experimental rig, start doing your experiments, and after maybe 6 months of constant failure, you should start to see some interesting phenomena. Congratulations, you're a scientist now, and it is up to you how you want to use the results you obtained. Do you want to share them with the world, or do you just want to keep them for yourself? Do you want to make money from the skills you obtained, or do you want recognition for them? I will leave it here for this video, it's already too long. But there are multiple more steps that you will have to take in order to publish your results, market yourself as a scientist, and then find a job. Subscribe, like and share this video, and I might make a follow-up. Please also write in the comments about what type of research you would like to do, so people can discuss if it's feasible to do it as a rogue scientist. You are probably also wondering how valid this way is. I mean, skipping university. Will you ever accomplish anything important with your life? So I will leave you with the YouTuber Ben and Builds. He was a high school kid that got really sick from Lyme's disease and had to work from home. So he got his grades by building stuff and posted on YouTube. He built a fusion reactor, a physical vapor deposition chamber, and a submarine drone, and much more. By not wasting his time in public schools, he could master his craft at a very young age. His demonstration of exceptional talent landed him a summer job at SpaceX at only 19 years of age. And he was also auditioned to be one of the Mythbusters, and he worked with projects that could be patented. Right now he is pitching an idea to reflect sunlight with huge mirrors in space to run solar cells during the night. So becoming a rogue scientist is definitely possible. Check out this channel for inspiration. Although he did end up going to college, this was his opinion about it. I'm glad to not be in school anymore. I don't like school. If you are thinking about going to school and you don't really want to go to school, and you don't think you'll get anything out of it, don't go. Uh, I, I kind of don't think I'm going to get anything out of it. Um, it's, it feels like I'm getting absolutely nothing done. It's so slow, the progress is horrible. Stupid way to learn, it's terrible, it's inefficient, and it's just like it's such a waste of money and it's just... It's horrible, I don't... Uh, uh. It's not a simple path, but college is also difficult, but also boring and expensive. In school, you spend time solving made-up problems in which the solutions give no real value to anyone. As a rogue scientist, you will have to solve your own problems, which is way more rewarding. 